Welcome to our explain of video for our progress report to Parliament for 2024. Each year since the Climate Change Act became law in 2008, we have assessed the UK progress towards its legal emissions targets. The UK climate is continuing to change. We've had the wettest 18 months on record in England, which has led to farmlands and livelihoods being disrupted through the loss of crops and animals. Globally, we've had the hottest June on record, so I know those of you watching from around the world will have experienced difficulties as well. What we are seeing in the UK reflects a truly global picture. The climate is changing at a faster rate than ever before. But last year, at least, we have seen positive news on the reduction of emissions in the UK. We have been the first major economy to halve our emissions. Now, as other countries follow this trend, and in some places reduce emissions even more quickly, the UK must seize the opportunities of accelerating the transition. In particular, we must increase the rate of progress beyond electricity generation in areas like electric vehicles, heat pumps, industry and agriculture. The UK has a strong track record of progress. The Climate Change Committee advises every five years on carbon budgets for the government to put into place. These are legally binding obligations towards our 2050 net zero target. This year, the UK successfully met its third carbon budget. Now we need to look forward. Just six years away is our 2030 NDC, or nation nationally determined contribution. This is a commitment we made internationally as part of the Paris Agreement. Agreement. Assuming we hit it, it will be the first time the UK has hit a target in, in line with net zero. But the UK is not currently on track to hit this target. Only a third of the emission reduction required to achieve it are currently covered by what we can consider a credible plan. This will need to change quickly. To take you through this in more detail, I'm passing over to my colleague, Dr. Emily Nurse, Head of Net Zero at the Climate Change Committee. Thanks, Piers. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Emily Nurse. I'm the Head of Net Zero at the Climate Change Committee. I'll be talking you through the analysis underpinning our progress report this year. So let's start with a look at the UK's greenhouse gas emissions. This chart shows clearly that emissions in the UK are falling. They're currently around half what they were just over three decades ago in 1990. By 2050, the UK needs to reach net zero emissions to ensure it's no longer contributing to the climate crisis. The UK's carbon budgets are legally binding caps on greenhouse gases emitted over five year periods. They're the UK's stepping stones to net zero. They're shown here as the solid blocks. Data released this year revealed that the UK's emissions over the third carbon budget period, covering from 2018 to 2022, stayed within the legal budget. This is shown by the fact that the black dot, which is the average annual emissions over the budget period, is below the carbon budget block. So up to now, all of the UK's carbon budgets, which began with the Climate Change Act in 2008, have been achieved. This is a great achievement from successive governments and demonstrates the strength of the Act. But it's not enough to just look back and celebrate. The government must now look forward and act urgently. 
The UK's 2030 target, shown as the red bar, is an international commitment to reduce emissions by 68% compared to levels in 1990. It's the first of the UK's targets set in line with net zero. The sixth carbon budget, covering 2033 to 2037, is also in line with net zero, but the first five carbon budgets were set on a less ambitious trajectory. Looking forwards, the pace of action needs to accelerate, as can be seen by the orange dash line showing the government's pathway for reducing emissions over the next 15 years. That covers the next three carbon budgets and the 2030 target. This chart shows the proportion of emissions reduction coming from each sector over the first three carbon budgets. Progress so far has been dominated by the phase out of coal and ramp up of renewable generated electricity, with more than half of the emissions reduction over the first three carbon budgets coming from energy supply. This has been a success story where clear and consistent policy has given the right signals to the market and driven progress. Later this year, the UK's last coal power station will close, a historic moment. The UK will now need to significantly reduce its oil and gas consumption. The block on the right shows what needs to happen over the next three carbon budgets, so the next 15 years, where more than three quarters of emissions reduction will need to happen outside energy supply. This means action will need to step up in other areas, including transport by shifting to electric cars and vans, and heating buildings with electric heat pumps instead of fossil fueled boilers. Now let's look at more recent progress. Last year, emissions fell significantly by 4% overall. This reduction would have been even larger if emissions from flying hadn't increased following the reductions in travel during the COVID pandemic. The increase in emissions from flying was offset by reductions in other areas. The largest reduction was in emissions from gas-powered generation of electricity in the UK, driven by a return to normal levels of imports of electricity from Europe, as French nuclear plants came back on the system after maintenance periods the previous year. Emissions from industry, shown in blue, also fell, as did emissions from heating people's homes, the red, with a smaller reduction seen from heating commercial and public buildings, that's the orange bar. The reduction in industry was in part driven by reduced production in the iron and steel sector, and reductions in buildings likely had a contribution from high gas prices. It's unclear whether this came from sustained shifts in behaviour. We've seen no evidence of an increase in energy efficiency measures, although relevant data is limited in this area. Surface transport emissions reduced slightly by nearly 1% last year, and this was despite car traffic increasing slightly. The transition from fossil fuel to electric cars is underway. The UK now has a million electric cars on the road, that's around 3% of all cars. We're starting to see glimpses of how electrifying our economy will benefit the climate. Now it's time to significantly ramp this up. Let's put this in context now for what needs to happen to ensure the UK meets its 2030 target. That target doesn't include emissions from the UK's contribution to international aviation and shipping, although they are included in later targets, including net zero. So in this chart, we'll focus on domestic emissions only. As I've just explained, emissions fell significantly last year. That's shown by this first purple bar. They fell more than the average annual fall in emissions for the seven years before that, from 2015 to 2022, shown by this bright purple bar. So things certainly sped up in 2023. The orange bar shows the average annual reduction needed over the next seven years, which is similar to that seen last year. But it's an increase compared to the longer term historical trend, this seven year average shown in bright purple. Most of the reduction seen last year was driven by increased electricity imports and other reductions in gas consumption that may be linked to high prices. Going forwards, this needs to change with policy support to ensure that progress ramps up fast. These bars on the right show the same thing, but excluding emissions from the generation of electricity, which has dominated progress so far, including in the last year. That's why the two purple bars on the right are much smaller than those on the left. And you can see the orange bar on the right is over twice as large as the bright purple one on the right. This is telling us that the pace of emissions reduction outside electricity supply needs to more than double over the next decade. Let's dig into that a bit more. This is the same type of chart, but broken down by 10 emitting sectors in the UK. We're comparing the average annual reduction seen over the seven years between 2015 and 2022 in purple with the average reduction needed for the seven years until the end of the decade in orange. Emissions and electricity supply have been steadily falling, and this has been driven by sustained decarbonisation action. There's still some way to go, as can be seen by the size of the orange bar, but we've already seen a lot of good progress. 
Across the other sectors, emissions reduction needs to ramp up fast. In surface transport, it needs to more than double, and in buildings, to increase more than threefold by the end of the decade. Agriculture, waste and land use have seen minimal progress in reducing emissions recently. Action needs to pick up now in all these sectors. And we'll also need to see a significant deployment of engineered removals by the end of the decade. These are technologies to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and permanently store it. That's shown by this last bar on the right. We haven't just analysed how emissions have changed, we've also monitored indicators that check progress against key outcomes and enablers for the transition to net zero. Worryingly, almost all our indicators for the rollout of low carbon technologies and nature-based solutions are now off track. Those in orange slightly so, those in red significantly so. Electric vehicle sales as a proportion of total new car sales shown on the left stagnated last year, putting them slightly off track compared to our pathway for the first time. Prior to last year, they had been increasing fast, so we're hoping this will pick up again. Electric van sales in the middle are increasing much too slowly. However, we did see a promising increase in the availability of public charging points for electric vehicles, the one in green on the right. This should be reassuring to anyone considering an electric vehicle when next looking to buy. With, with surface transport being the highest emitting sector in the UK, a rapid transition to electric vehicles is absolutely crucial for meeting the UK's 2030 target. This must be supported by clear and consistent policies and messaging from the government. Prices of electric vehicles have been falling. They're very efficient and running and maintenance costs are already lower than for conventional cars. Buildings is currently the second highest emitting sector in the UK and a rapid ramp up in the electrification of heating systems is also absolutely crucial. The UK is significantly off track and far behind other countries on installing electric heat pumps in homes. This needs to increase fast with supportive, long-term and clear policies. By 2030, roughly 10% of existing homes should be heated by heat pumps. Currently, that's only around 1%. The electrification of these sectors will have to be supported by a rapid ramp-up of renewable electricity generation. While there's been good progress historically, recent installation rates need to significantly increase. Installations of offshore wind need to treble, onshore wind to double, and solar will need to increase around fivefold by 2030. Planning barriers must urgently be addressed to ensure this can all happen at the required pace. The government's recent announcement to remove barriers to onshore wind installations is a promising first step. Tree planting and peatland restoration rates are also significantly off track, both needing to more than double. This is particularly urgent as it takes many years for trees to grow and remove enough carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The slow rates in tree planting today are already affecting how much can be removed in the 2040s and beyond. So overall we have a lot of catching up to do and next year we need to see a lot more green in these charts. We do see some more green in our indicators for monitoring demand for high carbon activities. Demand can be reduced by switching to lower carbon alternatives or through improvements in efficiency. Car traffic is still below pre-pandemic levels as people's travel habits have seen sustained shifts. This puts total car kilometres travelled on track for now. Van traffic, however, is growing fast and is already higher than pre-pandemic levels. The use of energy in homes, as well as in commercial and public buildings, has fallen in recent years, with contributions from warm temperatures and high gas prices reducing the demand for heating. Despite this, properties receiving government-funded energy efficiency measures fell in 2023 and are significantly off track for the government's own plans. So we've seen some progress in the demand indicators, but much of this seems to have been driven by external factors. We've also made an assessment of the previous government's policies and plans for achieving future targets. These are the current government's inheritance. This chart shows five-year blocks covering the next three carbon budget periods. The grey dots at the top show how high average annual emissions would be over those time periods in a world with no further decarbonisation action. The darker dots show the government's emissions pathway, so how low they expect emissions to be over that period following their policies and plans, and the purple lines show the UK's targets. The dashed purple lines are targets set before the UK had legislated net zero, so they will have to be overachieved for the UK to reach net zero. That's why the dark dots are below those targets, as emissions will need to be lower. The solid purple lines show the targets that are in line with net zero. This one in the middle is the 2030 target, and the one on the right is the UK's sixth carbon budget. The coloured blocks show our assessment of the previous government's policies and plans to achieve these emissions reductions. 
Green represents credible plans, yellow indicates there are some risks, orange indicates significant risks, and red is where plans are completely insufficient. There's also some bluey grey showing a gap between the government's quantified pathway and the target, with the previous government claiming that unquantified plans would make up this gap. Focusing in on the middle one, where the solid purple line represents the UK's 2030 target, around a third is covered by credible plans. This is an improvement from last year, where we assessed this to be a quarter. I'll dig into what changed in a moment. But despite this improvement, there is still almost half of the required emissions reduction that carries significant risk or has completely insufficient plans. The current government has a lot to do to get things moving rapidly. This chart shows this same assessment, but broken down by sector, focusing on what's needed in each for the 2030 target. Again, the grey dots indicate what we expect emissions to be in each sector by the end of the decade without further decarbonisation. So quite similar to today's levels in each sector. The darker dots are the government's projected emissions in each sector, where we see significant reductions are expected by the end of the decade, especially in transport, buildings, industry and electricity supply, all shown on the left. And the colours show our assessment scores. You can see that most of the credible plans, the green bits, are in the surface transport and electricity supply sectors, with a smaller contribution in industry. All other sectors carry significant risk. Buildings is currently the second highest emitting sector, but has a very low proportion of green. Most of the required emissions reduction has completely insufficient plans or carries significant risk. Let's now look at how these compared to our assessment last year. The main positive changes are in surface transport on the left, due to the confirmation of the zero emission vehicle mandate, which requires an increasing proportion of new car and van sales to be fully electric, and in industry in the middle, due to moves towards industrial electrification. Unfortunately, our assessment for buildings has worsened this year, largely driven by rollbacks on policies and plans announced by the former Prime Minister last autumn. Of particular concern was a 20% exemption on the phase-out of new fossil fuel boilers in 2035, for which no credible reason was given. While it was claimed that this would help with household bills, it's very unclear how it would achieve this. So we've seen some policy progress in the last year and a substantial decrease in emissions. However, there have also been setbacks and inconsistent messaging from the previous government, so there is still a long way to go. Most indicators for low-carbon technologies and nature-based solutions are off track for what is needed for the 2030 target, and only a third of the required emissions reduction is covered by credible plans. The new government now has an opportunity to act fast and to close this gap. I'll pass over now to our acting CEO, Dr James Richardson, to go over what those priority actions should be. Thank you, Emily. I'm Dr James Richardson, the Acting Chief Executive of the Climate Change Committee. Piers and Emily have explained that only a third of emissions reductions required to achieve the 2030 target are covered by credible plans. In particular, we need to widen the focus beyond electricity to sectors such as buildings, industry and tree planting. Last year, we saw some positive moves, such as the zero emission vehicle mandate and an increase in grants for heat pumps. But despite this, the previous government signalled a slowing of progress and reversed or delayed some key policies. That was unhelpful. Supply chains take time to build up. Businesses need to know they can make long-term investments with confidence. And households need to have access to clear information for future purchases. We need a clear and consistent direction from government, along with rapid policy action and a focus on removing barriers to deployment. Early next year, we will publish our seventh carbon budget. That will set out the committee's view on the path to net zero and the actions that are needed, allowing for long-term planning. To create the right environment for that and to get back on track to delivering our 2030 goal, our report today sets out 10 priority actions for the new government. The first action is to make electricity cheaper. Electricity is increasingly low carbon and offers the main route to low carbon travel, heating and industry. But currently, extra costs are added to electricity bills, widening the gap between the price of electricity and the price of gas. These costs relate to things like home insulation and some of the early costs of getting onto the net zero pathway, but they distort the choice we need to make so that people move away from gas and onto electricity. So households and businesses that make low carbon investments 
don't see the decrease in bills they should. Removing these costs or reallocating them within a typical dual fuel bill would provide the right incentives. Next, I want to turn to the policy rollbacks we saw last year. The exemption of 20% of households from the 2035 fossil fuel boiler phase out, the change in date of the phase out of new fossil fuel cars and vans, and the removal of the obligation for landlords to improve the energy efficiency of rented homes will all slow progress on carbon reduction. But they will not help households with the very high costs of energy they currently face, nor help the UK's energy security. To do that, we need to accelerate the move away from fossil fuels. Our recommendation is to reverse these rollbacks. Policy needs to send the right signal to businesses and consumers about the direction of travel in any given sector. That is how we'll get investment and jobs in the industries of the future. The next recommendation is to remove planning barriers that are getting in the way of technology that already works well, but we need more of. We are recommending that planning policy is made consistent with net zero. The new government has beaten us to it on onshore wind, which is very welcome. We'd like them to build on that by removing barriers to deploying more electric vehicle chargers and heat pumps. Changing this can make it easier, cheaper and quicker for households and businesses to install these key technologies. We also need to see change in our public buildings, such as schools and hospitals. By replacing fossil fuel boilers with heat pumps that can provide both heating and cooling, we can make them more comfortable to be in, more resilient to the impacts of climate change, and less impactful on the environment. But it can't be done overnight. These are essential public services facing multiple pressures. It needs a strategic program with long-term funding, so each building is tackled at the right time. The committee's next recommendation is about the UK's renewable energy auctions. These are the way in which the country attracts investment to build British-based renewables. Hitting the government's ambitious targets for renewable energy requires a rapid scale-up in the pace of deployment. Future auctions must be big enough to bring forward investment at the scale needed. Auctions this year and next are particularly critical to hitting 2030 targets because it takes a few years between awarding contracts and clean power coming online. Another area of early focus for the UK government must be accelerating the electrification of industrial heat. Lots of industries such as food processing, glass and paper need high temperatures or steam we need to modernise our industry in the UK to move away from using fossil fuels, mostly to electric technologies such as industrial heat pumps. To get this off the ground, it'll need support and incentives. Next on the list are trees and peatland. We need more trees to take carbon out of the atmosphere, and of course more woodland can help nature recovery too. But we're still not seeing the level of tree planting required. This is particularly important because it isn't something that can be done in a rush. It takes time for trees to grow. Peatlands can also be a vital carbon store, but are not being restored at the scale that is required. The government must sort out what's blocking this and make sure that we make the most of these natural solutions to take carbon out of our surroundings. As well as trees and peatland, the UK will need to develop engineered removals. These are new technologies which remove carbon from the atmosphere and store it below ground. Wherever possible, of course, we should just stop emissions in the first place. But these technologies will be needed for the final, hardest residual emissions. The technologies are in their infancy and therefore require support. The government must quickly finalise business models to speed up their deployment. Cross-economy thinking is required to support workers in the transition to net zero. If the transition to net zero is managed well, there will be opportunities for good, secure, new jobs up and down the country, with workers earning good pay and knowing they're making a real difference. Support is also required for workers in sectors which need to adjust, and in a small number of communities where a large number of jobs could be affected, such as Aberdeen. As the market for high-carbon goods shrinks, the government must support people 
to move from insecure jobs in dying sectors to new jobs with long-term prospects. Young people entering the labour market must have the opportunities to train in growing low-carbon sectors. Finally, we have a recommendation on adaptation. Action on adaptation is essential for the UK to be ready for the climate change that is already happening. In the last couple of years, the UK has felt the impact of heat waves and floods, and these damaging shocks will only increase as the planet warms further. But existing plans and actions are insufficient. Government needs a clear vision for what it wants to achieve, together with measurable targets and a real cross-government focus to deliver the action needed. So those are our 10 priority recommendations for the new government. They set out the committee's view on how the UK can get back on track to deliver against its legally binding targets. They require urgent action across departments with a focus on pace over perfection. Whilst these are actions for government, they can't achieve this alone. But together, government, investors, businesses and consumers can drive a rapid shift away from fossil fuels towards an increasingly cheaper, more secure and lower carbon future. Thank you.